Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. And this time it's another of our gun study videos. And we're using a gun that's actually been lent to us because it's quite an interesting gun, as you'll see. It's, it's got an interesting history to it. Uh, so a fellow collector, a patron of the association, uh, signed up to us through Patreon, um, has, has loaned us this to, to take a closer look at and perhaps try and tell him a little bit about it as well. So this is one of the Egyptian contract guns that happened during the early part of the Second World War when we were exerting our influence uh, as a nation and trying to encourage and sort of pacify different interests around the world. So we supplied 200, according to uh, Goldsmith, 200 of these Egyptian um, serialed uh, guns, ET1 to ET200. Um, the only other place in the world that we did that to was Iraq. So you have IK serial numbers for Iraq because the old spelling of Iraq is I-R-A-K. Um, but And ET, it stands for Egyptian. It's not an extraterrestrial gun. It's just one of those that we supplied for the Egyptian army. And what we're going to do is obviously take uh, the camera off the stand and have a really closer look. But just as you can see it here, you've got all this. It, it looks in really good condition. Um, it's painted black. It looks to be underneath that black, and you'll see as we get round, some some desert paint, some sand paint. Or oh, if this will come up, I'm sure it will. Um, we'll get that in a minute. Uh, but yeah, you, know, you can see there's some there's some sand paint on a couple of bits, uh, just on the end there. Uh, you've got some bra some painted brass. Or oh, sorry, sorry, some clear brass, some painted black, and then some um, some sand there as well. So it's unclear as to whether this is the original finish. Uh, certainly, you know, it's hardly ever been used. Uh, the original sort of parkerization, the, the blackening on the metal parts, um, I wouldn't imagine has been redone. There's a chance it has, uh, but whatever. We'll, we'll take a really close look at the components, um, have a good look around the gun and see what we can learn from it. Uh, we'll probably, we'll, we'll cover off the tripod as well, but this is just one of the standard tripods in the collection. If you've seen many of our other, certainly our firing videos, this is one of the tripod that we tripods that we roll out for that. So we might be duplicating a bit of information there, but otherwise, um, you know, we'll cover it off anyway for those that might not have seen our other videos. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Let's start with the serial number, because that's the bit that makes a difference here. So there you can see it's ET118, and it's stamped quite clearly below that VAC, Vickers Armstrong Crayford. While we're here, you can see that the um, rear filler plug here has also been painted. And now that underneath that is one of the fiberboard plugs, uh, the red um, sort of two part, or oh, it's a cover that goes over there. Um, over the sort of smaller brass piece. These are later replaced with solid brass variants as well. But you can see this has been subject to quite a lot of overpaint. It's not been painted very well. So this isn't the original factory finish. Um, and if we're, while we're looking here, you can just see this bit of sand paint that's under there. And as we're close into the rear of the feed block, this is painted, not, not clear brass. So, you know, it might be something that gets stripped back at some point, who knows. Uh, but let's always start from front to back. Otherwise we'll forget where we are. And we've got the standard muzzle attachment with the Mark II armoured cone on it here. Um, loads of thick paint on, on all of this, um, so we're not going to see any markings underneath. Um, but you know, the, the, the cork has been painted as well. Now this actually, that might not be cork, that might be a piece of rubber or something that's been cut around there, which would be quite sensible if it has, uh, because you know, the cork shatter, the corks break, so that's interesting. It might just be painted cork, but otherwise it might actually be a shaped piece of rubber. Um, that will certainly save it from any damage. Let's take a look, see if the muzzle attachment comes apart. Let's just see if, they, if it'll tell us anything underneath. Can take that off there. Um, no, nothing, nothing really of note there. Uh, nothing to say about any of that. You see, this is one of those solid brass um, filler plugs uh, in contrast to the uh, fiberboard one. So I think this is the number two and the fiberboard one is called the number one. You can just see the broad arrow stamped into it there. Any other markings that we can look at? No, no other markings on there. Um, so yep, quite good to, to see that all all together. That certainly came apart quite nicely. We'll put it back together in a moment. 
So as we move back down the gun, fluted water jacket. Uh, we're saying that fluted barrel casings, um, not water jackets, fluted barrel casings are produced in the Second World War. And um, you know, it's on guns such as this, the ET gun and the um, IK gun, and then the commercial guns as well that see it. Otherwise, the only ones that we're seeing are where um, previous stocks are being used up on the V series guns and occasionally a W series uh, where they've perhaps refurbed a Class C gun, commercial variant or something like that. Uh, they're not necessarily First World War vintage guns that have been upgraded. They were producing, you know, you'll see from our commercial guns, they all have the fluted barrel casing. Uh, so you know, nothing um, particularly spectacular about that, uh, but it is nice to see it on a World War II production gun, Second World War production gun. So um, what can we see? Yeah, painted faint, painted feed block here. Um, Fusey spring cover is, you know, got this lovely finish on it. Absolutely really nice finish. Um, no particular markings though. You know, this is interesting in itself. Sometimes you see it sort of quite crudely stamped, which probably means that it's, um, yeah, original to the gun. It's not, it's not a replacement. What you will notice from this side though, is there's no dial sight bracket, which you'd normally see on a Second World War vintage gun. So no dial sight bracket. Uh, they, I, as far as I can tell, they weren't supplied with them. Um, they weren't supplied with dial sights. So why supply them with the brackets to put them on? Uh, that means that they're really only set up for Mark VII ammunition up to 2,700 yards, and they'd be using the clinometer and the bar foresight rather than uh, anything else. What we can see from the tangent sight, the tangent sight uh, slide isn't our standard one. It's actually a First World War vintage tangent sight slide. Um, with this thumb piece here. This is, uh, it's been cut away though. So whether that's to provide an additional bit of grip, um, I'm not quite sure at the moment, but if we just slide that up, we can see there that we've got uh, VAC number two mark one on this side. This is uh, quite typical of VAC stamp pins. It's much more sort of, um, or less stylized, no serifs or anything like that on the font. Um, it, on some of these, we won't take this one apart, but on some of these you can flip over and you'll find the Mark 8Z information on the other side. This isn't the typical, uh, say so this isn't the typical slide that we'd expect to see. Normally you'd see a thumb, pre a, a press one, or the butterfly type slide is what you see the Mark 2. Uh, star, star, I think it is, on the Australian production guns. Um, no, this is a, you know, this has got the, that thumb wheel there. I think that's a Mark 2. Um, rather than a Mark II star star. Uh, but as always, graduated there, look up to 2,900 yards. What we're gonna do, so looking at the rear side of the breech casing, you can see that that finish is really high quality again. Um, good gloss on that. Let's say if it could be that this has been reblued at some point, but otherwise it looks in really good condition anyway. Um, just were spotted that we've got a VSM stamp in on the end of the T-fixing pin there which is uh, interesting. So obviously VAC are probably, uh, Crayford are probably producing the majority of their T-fixing pins as Mark IIs, the longer variety, so it'll fit the dial sight slide, uh, the dial sight bracket, but a VSM would fit on the, uh, you know, a Mark I um, T-fixing pin will, 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 is what this gun has, um, and maybe it's just that they had some existing stock. If we look closer here, you can see those two slots cut on the um, slide there on the Thumb piece, and we can see the VA, just VA, Vickers Armstrongs. Now, normally I've seen that on um, commercially produced guns, so uh, 1930s production guns, and maybe that's because this is from a production casing, uh, a commercial casing given the fluted jacket, breech casing on that. So maybe um, this has been matched with that rather than a VAC one uh, from a V series or W series war offer production gun. If we look inside the feed block there, you can see the overspray from a previous sort of sand colored paint, um, and then this black over the top of that. And you can see that it has, whether it's been used or not, I don't know, since that, since it's been painted, possibly not. Otherwise we'd probably see more wear and tear um, and more polishing, but certainly it's been you know, knocked away here, uh, possibly just in the process of, um, uh, um, you yeah, know, just the process of moving it and, and, and taking it apart and disassembling it. While we're this side, we'll just have that quick look at that tripod, just in case we haven't covered it before. So we've got number one, 
uh, sorry, number 4621, produced at Randwick Tramways, which is a suburb just south of Sydney, uh, near the airport. If you ever fly into it, there's a big sign saying Randwick. You can get all excited about You can see where the tripods come from. Uh, dated 1942, and then we have this little notch here that is made to fit a belt box carrier of an Australian design. It just folded flat fitted into the notch there. We don't have one of those in the collection. If you do uh, have one surplus, there were some reproductions made, I'm aware, in the United States. Uh, even a reproduction would be really nice to have in the collection, so get in touch with us if you do have one. Uh, other than that, that tripod is, as you'd expect, it's a bit grubby. This is one that we're gonna have apart at some point and give it a really good clean, because we do use it quite a lot, so we need to make sure that there's no wear and tear in there. We'll now take a look inside. So we've taken the feed block out and you can just see the VAC stamped into the top part here and the V303 stamped into the bottom of the brass there. Uh, we also have this A stamped here, which may be for an A, B or C feed block. So this is the A feed block, comes on the gun and then Bs and Cs would be in the spares. Um, possibly not, possibly just a random manufacturer or inspector stamping, but sometimes we do see guns matched for feed blocks. You see the numbers and stuff stamped on them as well. There's no numbering on this as far as I can see. Uh, what I did notice though is on the, um, the pin, You've got or the split pin there, you've got VSM, so Vickers Sons and Maxim, some older parts being used. And you can just see a little bit more of that paint job as well. Um, anything else on there to talk about? Uh, no, so let's put that back in the gun. Oh, worth saying, sometimes you see uh, on Australian feed blocks, particularly on the end of the gun here, you'll see a um, the serial number in there. It was worth looking for. Uh, let's pop that back in and open up the uh, top cover. So as I said, this is a loan into the collection. It's a deactivated gun in the UK. So that's why you've got the um, angle cut on the extractor there and the crossed swords of the deactivation proof house, which just for those that are interested, this looks like it was deactivated in 92, 95, 1995 on the, on the stamp there. Um, by the looks of the, this is probably a replacement lock, whether it was a period replacement or a, a at the time of the activation. So we've got the deactivation stamp on the bottom of the lot there as well with cross swords. Uh, but the MA40, made in Australia, 1940. Double ordnance stamps, which you see on components such as this. Uh, and I think that's a Lithgow um, Crown over 13 over L uh, inspector stamp there. Um, you know, it's that, that really high quality finish on the inside of the gun as well, which you know possibly indicates that actually um, it, you know, has been done uh, at a later date, but it could just be that these guns went to Egypt and never got used. Uh, we're aware that some ET guns were converted to 7.92 uh, when they were captured by the Israelis during the Six Day War um, in in the 1960s. I can't remember the date, uh, but you've got that uh, possibility. You, you see those with many more stamps, and I believe some of those have ended up in the United States. If you've got an ET gun, uh, we'd certainly be interested in hearing from you, knowing more about it. You know, we'd love to get this one into the collection permanently at some point, uh, but we'll just wait for that. And um, you know, all of the different Vickers, they all have their own history. This one has a particular history that goes into a bit of geopolitical influence as well. So, you know, adds a nice story. And we've got a couple more guns in the collection we will tell a similar story in the future. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.